Moolah La is brought to you by the nonprofit credit counseling agency, Credit Canada. If you're someone who spends any time at all on social media, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whatever, you have for sure come across the work of an influencer. So this is someone who um, posts on social media. They may do like lots and lots of posts about their family or their life, but occasionally there's a post that you think, what a second, that must come with some sort of arrangement with a brand or a product. And there are so many influence out there, influencers out there. Some are just starting out, trying to make a go of it, and others are massive celebrities with millions and millions of followers. Today, we want to talk about how they get paid. How does this even work? Is this a viable job opportunity? Sarah Turnbull is a senior account director uh, at Blue Sky Communications, which is a PR uh, agency. And one of the things they do is work with influencers on this stuff. So she joins us now to take a closer look at how all this works. Hello, Sarah. Hi, Bruce. It's nice to be here. It, well, I was literally doing a careers day yesterday with a whole group of 13 and 14 year olds. And I was talking about my boring old job as a journalist, knowing that what all of them really wanted to know is, do I have a future as an influencer? How would you answer that big picture question to a group of kids? Is this a job? You know, it absolutely is a job. And I think that there's a lot of us in our generation who've maybe been a little skeptical about how people are really making money, about the ethics of it, about where that money comes from. Um, but I can tell you that we work with hundreds of influencers every year. And there are some people who are making a real go of it by creating authentic, interesting, fun, engaging content. It's a ton of work. It's a lot of work. It's not an easy job. Uh, you have to be really entrepreneurial. You have to be really creative. But there's a real market for the, these types of people, uh, for, for influencers in general or content creators. We often call them when we're working with brands. Um, and, you know, it's a viable career path. It's hard. It takes a lot of work. Yeah. It's not for everyone. And it's not something that you can just uh, sort of start and start making money. It's a long road. You come from to this from the client perspective. So the client has some sort of marketing objective. You develop a plan, which has a whole bunch of aspects. And then what happens next? You go looking for people whose voice you think will be consistent with the brand message and who have um, enough followers to make a difference? Yep, that's exactly it. And the the first part of that is more important to most brands than the number of followers. They're looking for people who have something interesting to say, who have a neat way of saying it, and who fit a certain uh, like client demographic that mimics their clients. Um, so we're mostly interested in working with people who can create something really awesome. Um, you know, for most brands that we work with, they're using that content through their own social channels or through their own advertising. So the uh, influencers, followers don't matter as much. It's more about the kind of content that they can create. That's not always true. Sometimes we're looking for somebody who has a really big following to sort of shout a message loudly. Mm -hmm. um, but really, it, it starts with the content. It starts with making good stuff. I know you're going to say it depends as the first part of your answer to this question, but I do want to get some sort of a framework for how much money is involved here. So how would you think that through? How would you communicate that to a 14 year old about how the numbers actually work? Now, they won't appreciate what $1,000 really means instead of $10,000, but how'd you break it down for people? Okay, well, I'll start first with, you know, it's it. It's really similar to a lot of entertainment ecosystems. There are some big celebrities who make millions of dollars. We see them everywhere. They make it look easy. They're so charismatic. Um, but for every one of those, there's probably a hundred who are out there making a good living and paying their rent and you know able to afford nice things and and you know really honing their craft. Those people are probably, you know, it, it, we can talk about this after about the different ways that they make money, but they're probably looking at how they diversify what they offer as an influencer. Um, but they could charge anywhere from five to ten to fifteen thousand dollars for a sponsored post. Hmm. Um, they might look at imp brand ambassadorships that are, you know, in the tens of thousands of dollars. Um, and then for every one of those, there's a thousand who are out there hustling. They're just getting started. They're making content that maybe isn't quite landing with brands yet. 
Um, maybe they're doing it on the side and they're making a few thousand dollars, you know, every year just as like a sort of a hobby. Um, so, you know, there it, it's so wide ranging. Some people make five thousand dollars a year. Some people make nothing and some people make 10 million. It's right. All over the spectrum. You you um, reference the ways. So yeah. what are the ways in which these uh, which these programs can unfold? Yeah, and this is really important both for people who want to be an influencer, but also for us consumers who really need to understand how influencers are getting paid when they're out there talking about products. So there are there are so many different ways, but I'll talk about a few key ones. So the first for some of those more like celebrity type influencers is like a brand ambassadorship. So that's when you see an influencer partner with a brand. It's usually long term. It's usually pretty lucrative. And they're doing a whole bunch of different things. They might show up at events. They might, uh, you know, post sponsored content for that brand. They might create content that the brand uses for advertising, but it's usually long-term. It's usually pretty lucrative. What we see most of the time are more sponsored posts um, on social channels. Uh, that's usually campaign driven. So an influencer might work with a brand and do one or two posts. They get paid for that. It should be very, all of these should be very clearly uh, disclosed that there's a paid relationship uh, and that they're following brand standards. Mm. But then there's also a whole bunch of passive ways that influencers make money. So there's, you know, the more like affiliate marketing type thing. So if an influencer, if a fashion influencer is wearing an outfit, they're linking the pieces, that's a commissioned link. Those people are making a commission when you click through and buy that product. I know for me, I follow a lot of influencers for different things. I love those commission links. I find it's like a really neat curated way to, to get content, but you need to know that they make money when you buy that thing. And then there's some who are making advertising from their platform or making uh, ad dollars from YouTube. Um, and those are sort of more passive ways. Of making money. Authenticity is a real, um, it is a very difficult thing yeah. to find. It is a difficult thing to maintain. And it runs counter to the economics of this. Like if I'm an influencer, I have a particular passion for, I don't know, shoes, and I get a call from a spirits brand, it just may not be a fit. How do you as the agency find a way with influencers to ensure that the product they're talking about, it truly is a fit. Because I can imagine some influencers like, it's $5,000. Of course, I like Durango coolers, yeah. even though they're from the 90s. Yeah, I totally do. Yeah. Yeah, no. And that's a huge, um, you know, authenticity is a bu buzzword that we use way too often um, and that most of us can't even really define. Um, I know for from our perspective, when we're matching an influencer with a brand, um, we always uh, almost like we start fresh. So we're not just like, oh, here's our list of influencers we always work with. We're going to toss them over to a brand. It'll probably work out. Um, we're always looking for people that match that sort of client profile that they're looking for. And then there's always a conversation before we get started about, you know, uh, have you tried this or, you know, do you like this type of product? Um, it, that's a really important part of, of what we do. And we see so many bad examples out there. There's a lot of bad examples yeah. of people who clearly never tried the product. You know, they are like a fitness model, but they're talking about Doritos or whatever it is. Like, it just doesn't right. make sense. Right. Um, we really, really try to work through that. But when you find the best content is when you have a fitness model talking about Doritos because they actually really love Doritos. Right. And then and it's then fun. It, it does not, it's unexpected. It's memorable. Um, but we want to make sure that that's a real story before we actually talk about that and finding those stories, pulling, you know, we, we have a PR background. Our whole thing is pulling stories out of people. Um, that's the best part is making unexpected, fun, dynamic content. So let's say you're an influencer. You're like in that middle tier. You're not, it's not a couple thousand dollars a year and it's not $10 million a year, but it's enough. It's above the average living wage in this country. How do you increase the likelihood that that career will last more than just one year. Because I mean, the social media platforms that we were on five years ago are not the same as the ones that are dominant today. How can an influencer up the probability that they've got a business in five or 10 years? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a bit of a tricky answer, but really the answer is follow the trend, but don't be trendy. 
you know, you need to always be looking for what's next, what's coming. And especially when we look at TikTok, like TikTok is all about trends. Like you have to use, use the sounds, do the, do the funny challenges, the ones that feel, you know, authentic and fun, not some of those sillier ones, but, but really follow those trends. But the second you become trendy or like an expert in one platform or, or one type of content, um, you start to lose that like diversity that you're going to need to, to create a career in the long term. Um, the platforms, the type of content is changing every single day. The tools that you have available, the types of disclosures that are, that are required changes every day. Um, so you have to really be flexible, fluid, able to adapt to those changes and really have like that desire to keep iterating, keep finding your voice. Um, but I know when we are looking for people to work with, um, somebody who really, uh, has an, has a, has a voice and has created a niche of, of how they create their content or sort of a signature look, like that's something that we mm -hmm. really love. Fascinating discussion. I am so, so too old to play in this space. I'll just have traditional broadcast. Thank you very much. Yeah. But I, I felt like I learned so much. Thank you for taking the time, Sarah. No, it was my pleasure. Nice speaking with you. Sarah Turnbull, Senior Account Director of Blue Sky Communications. And she was here to talk about the economics of the influencer ecosystem. Okay, that's quite a lofty <laughs> phrase, but that's kind of what it amounts to.